Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Stand attention, friends. Either you join me here in honoring the fleets of His Holiness, the God Emperor of Mankind, or you get the hell out of here now, coward. For those of you who choose not to partake in this rite of praise, the Inquisition will be contacting you shortly with a follow-up survey. Street address required. Anyway, in the Milky Way galaxy of the 42nd millennium, one does not simply inquire as to whether a man has seen hell, but rather he asks as to the depths of hell into which he has traveled. Oh yes, the Milky Way galaxy of Warhammer 40k is a bad place. War, war, war. And even worse, WAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA
However, yes, Baca belongs on this list because of their great feats during the first Tyrannic War in the 41st millennium. The fleets of Baca accomplished what few have ever done. They held off the Tyranid Horde. A battle fleet with experience fighting Tyranids is nothing to scoff at. And while Baca is number 10 on this list, they'd be closer to number one on a list of fleets from just about any other science fiction universe. In ninth place, we have Battle Fleet Solar, which presides over Segmentum Solar, the home of Holy Terra. Now, Segmentum Solar is girded by the fleets of the surrounding sectors, but make no mistake, come a day of reckoning when all else is lost, it will be Battle Fleet Solar that is the last hope for mankind. Segmentum Solar is also home to some of the Imperial Navy's most important shipyards. Thus, Battle Fleet Solar, though not always active in war, must have at its ready the most capable ships and officers for the last stand that might one day be necessitated. Battle Fleet Solar is the most ancient of the fleets of man. It rose with the God Emperor himself and was battle forged during the Horus Heresy. Kind of in the way I learned to ride a motorcycle in Ho Chi Minh City, both trials of fire. In this way, it is the call to war that is passed down from generation to generation of Solar Voidsmen. In eighth place, if we acknowledge Battle Fleet Solar, then we must acknowledge its little brother, Battle Fleet Armageddon. Armageddon is situated towards the northern part of Segmentum Solar on the border of Segmentum Obscurus, and you can bet that its duties cross sectors. Still, it's a solar-based fleet, and thus it doesn't often deal with the unspoken forces. However, Armageddon shall not be forgotten for its efforts and the many lives its ranks has given to the bloodlust of the orc. The Voidsmen of Armageddon know better than anyone that WAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA
for the good of mankind. Next, in fifth place, we have Battlefleet Corona. Finally, my friends, we arrive at the Bastion Fleets, the brave armadas of Segmentum Obscurus which sit around the Eye of Terror. It is death that makes these fleets great. Lives by the millions given to the terrors of chaos. The Voidsmen who serve in this realm are desensitized to all fear and pain. They fight hellspawn gods of limitless power and numbers, and for it, Xenos are to them but light work. We begin with Battlefleet Corona. Bellus Corona, the subsector in which this battlefleet roams, houses the eponymous forge world, Bellus Corona, the primary base of Imperial naval operations in Segmentum Obscurus. Surrounding Bellus Corona are Obscurus's orbital dockyards for servicing ships and stockpiling weapons. So like many battle fleets, Corona must focus on defending important points of interest. However, instead of doing so against pirates and Xenos, they have to do so against the forces of chaos. Yes, it is up to Corona to maintain essential facilities without which the entirety of Battlefleet Obscurus would be lost, and it has to do so basically beyond enemy lines. The constant vigilance Corona Voidsmen must maintain while simultaneously playing defense endows them with rare experience and highly specialized skills. The Corona fleet also has a lot of experience dealing with Space Hulks, the mangled debris of once bright starships, which often are infested with orcs, but in the case of Bell's Corona, are overrun with the forces of chaos. In fourth place, we have Battlefleet Agrippina. Agrippina is well known for the numbers they sacrificed to the hellish ghouls of the warp while participating in the Gothic War. Agrippina is a small fleet, and yet has to make its numbers work against the most formidable foes in semi-existence. No doubt its voidsmen fight hell like hell. Agrippina is also home to many Imperial Navy shipyards of Segmentum Obscurus, and thus, like Corona, must keep its territory safe lest the Obscurus Navy fall short of ships and other supplies, like ammunition. And most importantly of all, Agrippina provides these resources to the Cadian forces fighting at the very front of hell. Agrippina has not fared well of late, and is a realm of chaos now. But the lives it has given and the battles it's fought in the war to save mankind echo into the eons as the deeds of the bravest of all voidsmen. In third place, we have Battlefleet Scarus, a subfleet of Obscurus that patrols a region not unlike Agrippina that in the 42nd millennium has been dominated by the forces of chaos. I mentioned before that Battlefleet Corona has experience dealing with Space Hulks. Well, that's because in the late 41st millennium, circa year 999, Chaos armies marched on Scarus Sector and brought with them these demon-infested Space Hulks, so Corona only faced the tail end of this invasion. Additionally, during the war, Scarus was also beset by Orc attacks. This means that the Scarus fleet had to confront the forces of Chaos, Space Hulks, and Orcs all at once, a truly impressive feat of humankind, and one that should prove that there are no limits for the Empire of Man so long as the Imperium remains in heat of his holiness. In second place, we have Battlefleet Gothic of the Gothic subsector in Segmentum Obscurus. Now, from the map, you may be inclined to ask, why put Gothic in second place if it's much farther from the Eye of Terror than the other Bastion fleets? Well, despite its decent distance from this warp rift relative to, say, Agrippina, Gothic has historically been one of the most treacherous regions in the Milky Way galaxy, and the legacy of the Gothic fleet is utterly unrivaled. The best example of this is the Twelfth Black Crusade, or the Gothic War, which I alluded to earlier when I was discussing Agrippina's role in said war. In the early years of Millennium 41, circa 140 or so, a massive warp storm was unleashed on Gothic Sector, blocking it from all outside communication and support. Battlefleet Gothic was literally stuck in hell, and had to fight its way out. For over two decades, the Gothic fleet battled the forces of chaos, including the Black Legion and other Hellborn Warmasters. And on top of that, it had to fight off various Xeno threats, such as the Eldar and Orcs. And yes, there were also pirates to worry about. So Gothic had to survive all of the most powerful forces in existence, save for the Necrons, at once. And yeah, they lost billions to the Gothic War. However, given this impossible, harrowing trial from which they emerged with victories to their name, the Gothic fleet will be hard-pressed to find a greater challenge in the future. And the knowledge and skills gained in this war are passed down to all who end up in Gothic's ranks. The gap between the forces of chaos and that of man is thus narrowed, as through Gothic, mankind can believe that triumph is possible. 
I can't even imagine just how imposing of a force Gothic would be for any other navy, having fought orcs, Eldar, and Chaos all at once. But of course, they're not number one on our list. There's only one fleet that could be number one, and you all know which one it is already. The voidsmen who eat at the mouth of terror and drink from the anus of hell. Battlefleet Cadia. Perhaps the greatest fleet in all of science fiction. The Milky Way galaxy of Warhammer 40k is a place surrendered to war. It's a place where death is ubiquitous and comes easy, and where the days grow darker and harder year after year. But such hopeless circumstance has given rise to unspeakable acts of human valiance. And nowhere is this truth more lived than in the Cadian sector. The fleets of Cadia have one job, die. Die for humanity and hold the forces of chaos back from spilling out into real space. Of all the legends we've retold in this video of these various fleets contending against the forces of chaos, in all of them does the Cadian fleet have a hand. Battlefleet Cadia is a massive force, and all of the ships and men within are conditioned to live in constant nightmare. Cadian voidsmen are eternally vigilant. They fear nothing of the Xeno, chaos, or death to come, and they wake and sleep ready to fight and die. No greater glory is claimed for the Emperor than by the Cadian fleet. Put up against a fleet from another universe, or perhaps even one from 40k itself, I imagine that Cadia would ravage and demolish its opponent in a matter of hours, its voidsmen having been conditioned by the constant song of Hellwar to feel nothing but the rush of battle, and to without delay unleash devastation on their foes, even if death be the cost of the fight. There's an old saying, the planet broke before the guard did, but the navy ain't even broken. Anyway, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what your favorite battle fleet is. Remember to subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.